While you may be aware that Maltego is great for analyzing information that's static, it also has uses for monitoring live conversations on social media. Now, nation-state back hackers are often responsible for monitoring and influencing conversations on social media, and today on Cyber Weapons Lab, we'll explore how that works. Nation state back hackers are often responsible for monitoring or even influencing conversations that are happening online, especially on social media platforms like Twitter. Now, the way they do this is by first identifying and then starting to monitor both the people and the hashtags that are being used to spread information about maybe something like an unpopular political protest. Now, we can use tools like Maltego, which are traditionally used for things like investigating information that's already out there, but instead start to use it for sorting incoming information in interesting ways. Now, we can use a machine that actually uh, starts to identify tweets that are related to a particular topic and sort them by the people that are talking about it, the hashtags that are spreading the information, and any people that are being mentioned, as well as the individual tweets. Now, Maltego also has the benefit of running these tweets through something called IBM Watson, which is a transform that can do sentiment analysis, further identifying people based on their beliefs about a particular topic they're talking about. Now, we can use this to build lists of users who feel either favorably or not so favorably about a particular thing they're talking about. And this is useful if we want to target someone with an information campaign with maybe some polarizing information or some other thing that's crafted specifically for certain users. Now, to get started with this, we don't need much. We'll just need either Kali Linux or to download both Java and then Maltego from the Perturba website. So let's begin. In order to start monitoring things on Twitter, we'll first need to download Maltego or just open it up in Kali Linux if that's the operating system you're using. First, you'll need to start a new graph by going over to the New Document tab and clicking on the icon here. Once you have one open, we'll be using a machine, so go ahead and open the Machines tab here and click on Run Machine. So from these, we'll need to scroll down to the Twitter Monitor. And we also have the option of the Twitter List Monitor, but that will actually monitor a list of users. And what we want to do is just pick a phrase or something else that will be able to uh, pull back a, a lot of information around a certain topic. Now today, we're, a lot of people are talking about the creation of the Space Force, so we'll just use Space Force as the phrase that we're looking for. So as we let this run, we should begin to see a lot of different tweets all around the same topic. Now this will begin to extract and kind of organize the information in a friendlier way to display relationships and talk more about, as you can see here, the hashtags involved and the people who are tweeting. Now, as the information comes in, it will quickly become overwhelming in the default view. So, so you will need to start to organize it in a way that's a little bit more friendly to understand the kinds of information that Maltego is displaying to you. First, you can display information in a more compact view by selecting the organic mode, which will organize things like so. Next, we can start to mine for relationships by going to the view window and changing the view to ball size by diverse descent. Now what that does is weight uh, certain pieces of data more uh, importantly if they have two distant uh, children, or is it children, yes, I'm sorry, parents, parent nodes that are separate rather than if they're just being linked to by the same nodes over and over. This means that things that are being linked to consistently, like hashtags that are being used to spread the conversation, will appear much larger and draw more attention, which makes it easier for us to see at a glance what the major points of the conversation are. Here we can see different variations on the hashtag Space Force, along with the at uh, real Donald Trump as all different things that are being discussed. So as information continues to come into this machine, which we'll see again in five seconds, we'll be able to start seeing this information come into place and the major players of, of the conversation will be a little bit more clear as we start to compare these things to each other and find patterns. Now, once this information comes in for our second round, we can select everything that we found and begin to take it a little step further with sentiment analysis. Now here I type sent uh, to get the sentiment analysis tab. And after selecting everything with control A, I can run the sentiment analysis to determine which tweets are positive, negative, or neutral. 
Here, as the results come in, we'll see that they're weighted pretty heavily because we're trying to point all the discovered tweets to them. And we'll be able to click on negative and see all the tweets that are referenced, positive and neutral. Now it's important to note that even though Watson is a, a mighty supercomputer, it does get confused with things like sarcasm, where you might be using a bunch of positive words to describe something in a negative way. Now it'll often misclassify things like that. But in general, if you're looking up a divisive topic and you're, let's say, an information warfare team or a hacker who's looking to spread a bunch of propaganda, you can find people who are expressing uh, positive or negative uh, opinions on polarizing views by simply clicking on uh, positive or negative, in this case positive, going to investigate, and then clicking on add parents. This will load all the tweets involved that have been determined to have negative sentiment and allow you to also find the author so you can follow up either by messaging them directly or looking for the kind of content that they're sharing. Now another benefit to this is as information comes in, anything that's being shared a lot, for example things that are viral or things that are really really popular, will pop out pretty obviously and allow you to start seeing things that are emerging before the average person would get a chance to discover them. This is great for both journalists and for people who are monitoring protests or other sorts of events where they might need to determine something, uh, maybe a video that's being shared, that's becoming very popular very quickly. Now Multego doesn't take a lot to be able to continually draw this information in, and as you can see, every iteration brings in more information and allows us to, to conduct further analysis on the data points that are brought inside. Once we do this for enough times, we'll be able to build a complete picture of what's going on, but the best part is that it's refreshed so the old points of data, if they're not being continually uh, used, will disappear from the map and we won't just be looking at a historical picture, we'll be looking at live information that is continually shared and not just something that was retweeted once. This is a great way of diving into Twitter without needing to spend all day behind the graphic user interface scrolling through tweets because it allows you to pull information like usernames and then run subsequent searches to determine other things they might have said or whether or not they might be a good target for a social engineering attack. So while this is currently being used against a news event to keep on top of something like a, an announcement or even a natural disaster like a fire, you can also use this to monitor a company or somewhere else where you would want to continually draw in any time that entity that, or that target was being mentioned. So the flexibility of this both to monitor live events and also events that have happened in the recent past are pretty impressive. Monitoring social media platforms like Twitter has a number of advantages for different types of people. Journalists can stay on top of breaking events by getting close to the people who are spreading information like photos or video of a live event, and hackers can use it to get the ammunition they need for a social engineering attack by sourcing information about ongoing events even if they're actually quite far away. Now, nation states can take it to a new level by drowning out information that's being shared by identifying hashtags and users associated with the information that's being spread and either getting it banned by storming it with a bunch of spam or otherwise spreading misinformation to make it confusing to understand what's actually happening. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.